Police have arrested four more Chinese nationals in suspicion of involvement in the gold smuggling case. Now, in this edition of Kantipur News, you, we also have updates for you about the government preparation to revise the security arrangements at the Trivan International Airport, among other issues. Good evening, I'm Praram Badahal. Let's begin with the main stories. Dengue outbreak spreads to 74 districts, more than 12,000 infected with 12 deaths in a month and a half. Government efforts to curb dengue remain ineffective. President and the ruling coalition making efforts to resume operation of the parliament, which has been held hostage for three weeks. Daily expenses of 700,000 even when meetings are not held. Government gears to amend 45-year-old Tourism Act begins holding consultations for preparation of a draft. Experts stress on making tourism-friendly laws. And England storm into the FIFA Women's World Cup for the first time. See off co-hosts Australia 3-1 in the second semi-final to take on Spain for the trophy on Sunday. A Nepal police has arrested four more Chinese nationals in connection with the gold smuggling case. This is the first arrest made by the Central Investigation Bureau, CIB, after taking charge of the case from the Department of Revenue Investigation. The four arrested reportedly were directly in contact with Thupten Chiring and Dawa, who are in police custody, and the also were in constant communication with the Ready Traders Company. Earlier, the Department of Immigration had blacklisted a few Chinese nationals who were in contact with Belgian national Dawa. Last week, two Chinese nationals from the blacklist were arrested but were released after the CIB concluded that they had no involvement in the smuggling case. So far, 22 individuals have been arrested for their alleged involvement in the scandal, including 17 Nepali nationals. In the wake of the recent ghoul smuggling from the Thrivan International Airport, Prime Minister Pushkamal Dahal has said that changes should be made to the airport security management and that a task force will be formed to consult with relevant experts for necessary recommendations. A meeting was held in Singalurwa today to discuss on the airport security management and the strategies that the government should take to deal with the security lapses. In the same context, Finance Minister Prakash Ranmath said that coordination among state entities was a must to ensure effective security mechanism. The Kathmandu District Court has allowed the Central Investigation Bureau to keep in judicial custody those arrested over their allegation of involvement in Lalta Niva's land scam for five more days. The District Court has also directed the Bureau to continue investigating former Land Revenue Chief Dharma Gautam and Summer Jung Company's former head Lok Hari Khimire while they are on bail for health reasons. Meanwhile, the CIB has been in a dilemma regarding recording statements from former Prime Minister duo Madhav Kumar Nepal and Baburam Vatarai. The Bureau is looking to consult the Office of the Attorney General in this regard before proceeding with the probe against the former Prime Ministers. The Bureau has already recorded statements from former Secretary Lilamari Paudel, who has been alleged of facilitating the transfer of the three rupees of land belonging to Samarjan Company to Guti. The CIB now has 10 days remaining to conclude its investigations. A nine-year-old boy has died because of dengue infection in Dharan, taking the death toll because of dengue to 12. The minor had been taken to Dharan's BP Koirala Institute of Health Sciences two days ago after reporting of high fever. However, he was referred to Biratnagar's big hospital due to lack of ICU beds. 71% of those who test for dengue have returned positive in Dharan. All 20 wards of Dharan have reported of the mosquito-borne infection. The BPKIHS has been struggling to accommodate the rising number of dengue patients. Majority of the wards in the sub-metropolis have been operating health camps of their own, considering the rising number of infections, which still remains inadequate. Meanwhile, health experts say the lack of coordination among the three tiers of the government has resulted in the failure to contain the spread. And despite the government formulating a work plan to control the alarming spread of dengue, including the roles of all three tiers of the federal, provincial and local levels, complications have surfaced in curving the infections. On the basis of the National Guidelines on Dengue Prevention, Management and Control 2019, the government had formulated a work plan for the fiscal year 2023-24. However, more than 12,000 have been infected with dengue in the period of just a month and a half, while 12 deaths have been confirmed so far. 
The highest number of infections have been reported in Sunsari, Morong, Dhading, Chapa and Kaski. In such a situation, saying the local and provincial governments have a larger role to play in curbing the spread of dengue, the federal government has been shying away from its responsibilities. Dengue infections have been reported in 74 districts so far. Identifying annual risks of dengue infections, the Epidemiology and Disease Control Division has said that efforts were underway to formulate long-term strategies to curve its spread. Meanwhile, the National Health in fact, Human Rights Commission has drawn the government's attention towards the need to prioritize the rising number of dengue infections and efforts to control the spread. Issuing a press release today, the commission attempted to alert the government of a looming dengue epidemic and has urged all three tiers of the government to expedite campaigns to track and destroy the mosquito larva that spreads the infection in order to ensure the public's right to health. The Commission has also urged the three tiers of the government to increase awareness among the public regarding the significance of sanitation. It is now time for our segment Public Pulse where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse. Before we ask today's question, let us take a look at the result from yesterday's poll. Yesterday we asked, what is the reason for the delay in reaching labor agreement with destination nations of Nepali migrant workers? 13% were for A, hesitation from destination nations, 68% were for B, inadequate diplomatic effort, and 19% were for C, ignoring workers' plights. And now here is our today's question. Why has the government effort to control the spread of dengue not been effective? Your options are A, lack of coordination, B, inadequate human resource, and C, lack of awareness. The voting is on. Type NEWS, select your option, A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. Chairperson of the main opposition, CPNUML, KP Sharma Oli, has held talks with President Trump's under Podel. Now, political advisor of the President, Krishna Porkhil, has said that a discussion held at the Sheetal Niwas dealt on addressing obstructions at the Parliament and contemporary political issues. President Podel drew Oli's attention towards ending Parliament obstructions, citing its negative impact on the public. The President also suggested all the parties to contribute in creating a conducive environment. Meanwhile, Oli had expressed concerns regarding the President's health during the dialogue. Speaker Devraj Gimire had met with the President a few days ago and had urged him to make efforts to resolve the obstructions at the Parliament. The ruling coalition has held talks regarding clearing obstructions of the opposition at the Federal Parliament as well. Today's meeting of the leaders of the coalition held at Palatar has decided to expedite discussions with all parties of the Parliament, including CPNUML, on clearing obstructions and resuming operation of the Parliament. The meeting was attended by Nepali Congress President Sher Bhadar Dewa and CPN Unified Socialist Chairperson Madhav Kumar Nepal, among others. With the demand of the formation of a high-level committee to probe into the gold smuggling case, CPN UML has been obstructing the parliament from the 26th of July. The federal parliament has been rendered ineffective since the 26th of July amid obstructions by main opposition CPN UML with its demands for formation of a high-level committee to probe into the gold smuggling scandal. However, despite the meetings being adjourned several times, lawmakers have continued receiving allowances and facilities with some up to millions of rupees of the state coffers. 48 meetings of the House of Representatives have been held so far since the ongoing session of the Parliament began on the 7th of May. Of them, five of the last meetings were adjourned amid the main opposition's obstruction, taking the number of total meetings adjourned for various reasons in the ongoing session to nine. Now, despite the meetings being adjourned, lawmakers are still receiving a daily allowance of 2,000 rupees. The Parliament Secretariat has also been issuing expenses under the headings of electricity, water, stationary items, security, and health-related aspects, among others. It is estimated that the expense for each meeting totals around 700,000 rupees, which includes preparations for the meetings, allowances for the parliamentarians, transportation facilities, and security. In this scenario, questions have been raised over the ethics of the parliamentarians, who, without producing any result, are depleting the state coffers. A few parties, like the Rashtriya Sotandra Party, meanwhile, have announced that they will not take allowances at the parliament meetings are not being held, which observers say has set an example for the other parties as well. And domestic tourism is considered a significant aspect of the economy. 
However, the existing Tourism Act does not identify domestic tourism. Now, when the government had formulated tourism-related laws in 1978, domestic tourism was not a popular concept. However, the scope of tourism has now expanded and the sector employs around 1 million Nepali nationals. Considering the growing tourism sector, the government has made preparations to introduce a new Tourism Act. Domestic tourism has been increasing in Nepal in recent years. The trend of visiting new places during holidays is on the rise. The number of Nepali nationals visiting abroad as tourists has also increased. A total of 145,000 Nepalis had visited abroad in the past year alone. However, the existing Tourism Act of the country does not recognize Nepali tourists visiting abroad or inside the country. Analysts are of the opinion that the tourism sector has not been able to achieve expected growth because of the existing legal provisions which only recognize the foreign nationals visiting Nepal as tourists. When the tourism-related laws were formulated 45 years back, the scope of tourism was limited. The tourism sector has now expanded to more than two dozen disciplines including mountaineering, trekking, rafting, paragliding, meditation and religious tourism as well. Now, following the increase in grievances regarding the failure of the previous act to address all aspects of tourism, the government has made preparations to introduce a new act. The concept paper prepared by the Ministry of Culture, Tourism and Civil Aviation has already been approved by the Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of Law and has also been appreciated by the Council of Ministers. The Ministry has already formed a committee to seek recommendations and prepare the draft of the new Act which will interact with tourism stakeholders and experts for the period of one month. With this, the Ministry has claimed that it will formulate relevant and tourism-friendly laws. The existing laws have also not been able to include technology. There is also a need to address digital economy, green economy, cashless technology and other aspects of tourism in the new Act. The tourism sector has developed as a lucrative industry in recent decades and contributes 1.78% in the gross domestic product or the GDP of Nepal. Formulating a tourism-friendly act which addresses new dimensions of tourism and technology can serve as a positive catalyst in ensuring expected benefits to the national economy from the sector. Now, in our public voice segment, today we have asked in several provinces regarding the local government's failure to utilize budget according to their plan. Let us now take a look at what they had to say. Sports News. Now, England have marched into the final of the FIFA Women's World Cup for the first time as they stormed part of past Australia to win 3 1 in the second semi final of the mega tournament, which concluded today. That is all for the moment. Up next is the news in Nepali. Thank you for staying with us. Goodbye for now.